What's it like to talk industry trends while eating hot wings covered in hot sauce? I'm joined by Jason Pereira of Woodgate Financial to hear how it all went. Jason, welcome. Thanks for having me. <laughs> you have been an absolute trooper this event. We really put you and Michael Kitsis to the test up on stage there during the hot takes uh, mm -hmm. session. We gave you 10 hot sauces and somehow you made it through all 10 and copious amounts of milk, which was a little disturbing at nine in the morning. We did run out of milk at one point. It, you did. It, it, it was fun to see somebody run out with a gallon of milk <laughs> pouring that for you. But Better I, than the EMT. <laughs> yes, at least we didn't have to do any signals and, and call, the flag anyone in, yes. no fire extinguishers, no. anything like that. But tell me how that session was, because from the audience, it was a blast to watch because you were able to actually get through some very high level topics while eating some very aggressive hot sauces. Aggressive is a good word for it. So in a word, painful. Um, at certain points, the air entering our mouths to speak just seemed to ignite our mouths. So it was, um, it was interesting. Uh, and it was easy to stay, stay on topic. I mean, Michael and I can geek out over stuff for much longer times than an hour, but having to stay on pace and you know, every five minutes, find a segue into, speaking of regretful decisions, here is the next one, and then, you know, hope that it doesn't hurt you, it was interesting. And a big topic of discussion up there was around AI. Michael mm -hmm. actually made a comment and said it's really not that intelligent, it's more artificial than intelligent. So, what's your take? Oh, it's like, it is totally a trick of the, of the mind, right? Like, it looks like it's really, really smart. Right? But I, as I said up there, it's like that Scooby-Doo meme where they take the mask off the ghost and it's just the innkeeper or whatever else it is, right? And, and the mask is, is, is like, oh look, it's artificial intelligence, you pull it off, and it's like, here's a bunch of math equations and a probability engine. That's really what it is, and when you kind of understand what it is, it takes some of the, some of the mystery out of it, but look, it is, I don't want to take away from the fact, it is very impressive, it's an incredible leap forward, it's got a lot of potential, but the, the techno-utopianists who are like, oh great, I'm going to fire two assistants because of this, we're so far from that. Like, they are completely on a and different those are planet. the immediate headlines. That's what drives me crazy. It happened with the robo movement yep. when it said, it's going to take over, it's going to take jobs from advisors. Yep. We're just not there. If it bleeds, it leads, right? And at the end of the day, you know, the, and I, as my AI presentation, I started off on purpose with a Terminator sequence of a skull being crushed because this is where people's minds go to. They go to the, the, the dystopian views of how technology is going to dispose and dispose of and replace us all. When in actuality, those are the like fever dreams of those who don't understand humanity. At the end of the day, as long as I'm dealing with another person who's got a mind that was developed back, you know, genetically tens of thousands of years ago and hasn't evolved, then you know what, there's going to be a point at which it's a bottleneck. And you know, every technological change that's supposed to put advisors out of business has failed miserably because at the end of the day, this is not about investing, this is not about you know, portfolio management, this is not about the financial plans. It is about the human being sitting across from me and helping get them the best version of their lives. And the business has evolved to understand how to do that more and better as we've taken advantage of various digital, digitization and automation, and that's going to continue to happen. And there's obviously been this proliferation of AI tools and mm -hmm. that are really starting to bubble up, uh, especially around productivity. You know, we've determined that it's not quite there yet in terms of intelligence, mm -hmm. but how are you utilizing it as an advisor yeah. in your practice? Yeah, and I already advise a number of companies like this. And you know, there's those that have come to me and said, well, here, we're going to build this like all-powerful AI engine. No, you're not. That is such a complex problem. But where it can be used very readily is to automate one thing like hit one note really, really well over and over again. And if that one thing is a two hour process and now gets done in five minutes, oh my God, the productivity gains, incredible. And yeah, maybe that does lead to staff reduction headcount to some degree, but at the end of the day, I got to engineer my processes around that. If I can put together a number of one thing kind of AIs that really give me a lot of, a lot of productivity gains, that's fantastic because it allows me to spend less time on that stuff and more time on the human side. And something that you and I have talked about a lot is this concept of the funnel because it yep. really all starts with data and that's where AI is ultimately helping. It yep. can gather it all, it can read it all, and then ultimately turn it into automated workflows for you. So that's really where you know, I'm most interested in and folks getting that part right. Well, I mean, that, that speaks really to workflow. Whether it be the, you know, the conversion funnel of taking in new leads and converting them into people, uh, to, to clients, or taking them through a process. At the end of the day, it is all process automation, right? And you can't automate something that doesn't exist. So advisors first and foremost, need to understand what is their process, what tools can basically replace them in that part of the equation, and not only that, but capture all the data that we're going to need downstream at different levels. And without the data, AIs downstream won't be able to do their job, right? So how do we kind of nurture the entire journey? So we've been talking about process and journey mapping and stuff like that for a long time. This is no different. Just the method for actually how we execute is now better. 
Well, Jason, I'm glad your mouth finally cooled off so we could have this interview. It's a good thing you're this far from me because you'd be like on fire right now. <laughs> well, like I said, you're an absolute trooper. Much appreciated. Always a pleasure having you here at EDGE. And thank you so much for your insights. My pleasure. For WealthManagement.com, I'm Shannon Rossick.